Hello everyone. One Sunday, in a mass specially celebrated for married couples, a priest preached about marriage. At the end of the service, he was giving out small wooden crosses to each married couple. He said, Place this cross in the room in which you quarrel the most, and you will be reminded of Jesus' new commandment, Love one another. And you won't argue much. One woman came up and said, Father, you had better give me ten crosses. No number of crosses on the walls of our homes or around our necks will make us Christians unless we practice Jesus' commandment of love, which is of course so very hard to follow. All of us struggle to put into practice this great teaching of Jesus. Today's readings remind us that a suffering and death on the cross was the necessary prelude to Jesus' exaltation and enthronement in heaven, and so are our hardships to inherit true peace and joy in life here on earth and in heaven. We read in the Acts of the Apostles that two of the Apostles, Paul and Barnabas, returned to Antioch to strengthen the believers and to encourage them to persevere in faith. In the previous chapter to today's text, chapter 13, verse 50, we are told, The Jews stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So, despite the animosity and persecution, the two apostles went back to the city and continued to preach to the people there boldly. They said, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships before we can enter the kingdom of God. In other words, they warned the believers that suffering is an essential part of Christian life. The apostles not only warned others of suffering, they also gave witness of suffering. In his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 35, St. Paul emphasizes the apostles' commitment and faithfulness to Christ. He says, Can anything cut us off from the love of Christ? Hardships, distress, persecution, lack of food and clothing, threats or violence, as scripture says. For your sake we are being massacred all day long, treated as sheep to be slaughtered. The exhortation is a reminder to all Christians. Can you and I courageously and willingly go back to the place where we have been shamed, rejected, humiliated, defamed and beaten? Can we love someone who has offended us? Can we bear the suffering for the sake of Christ? Each of us at some time or other experience and will experience suffering and hardships for our belief in the Lord Jesus. But we are called upon not to be cowed by them. In his book, The Way, the founder of Opus Dei, Saint Jose Maria Escriva writes, If you accept difficulties with a faint heart, you lose joy and your peace and you run the risk of not deriving spiritual profit from the trial. We may not be called to undergo the same kind of persecution for God's cause as were Paul and Barnabas or the early Christians, but we must follow in the footsteps of Jesus and be unselfish in our love for and service to others. In today's Gospel, we hear Jesus' commandment. He commands us, first, to love one another as He loves us. 
and second, to love in such a way that others are able to identify or recognize that we are his disciples. How can we love others as Jesus loves? There are several things which Jesus has given us as an example, things that apply to our own everyday lives. Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, our Savior, the sinless, truly divine, but He is also truly human. He shows compassion for the sick. He cares for the poor. He feeds the hungry. He is kind to sinners. He comforts the afflicted. He forgives those who are cruel to him. These are a few examples from scripture which we all can follow and obey. So we can love others really like Jesus loves. But we may not be able to love perfectly as Jesus does. To love like Jesus loves, we must place others above ourselves and to daily empty ourselves and emulate the one who did so unconditionally, wholesomely and successfully. And it is not easy. Even though we strive to be like Jesus, sometimes we fail. However, we can always rededicate our life to Christ by truly repenting for our sins and by honestly making sacrifices in reparation for them. That's why we gather week after week to report and share with each other what God does for us and how He opens the door of faith to us. In time, as St. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, we will reap the benefits of stronger faith, peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, and eternal life. The more we sow in the Spirit, the more we will reap spiritual things. Amen. God bless you.